Good morning. This is Jason Dean coming live at you again from Film Fanatic headquarters. It's been a <clears throat> it's been a few days since I've done a show, so it's Sunday and it's um, about ten fifty one. So I hope everyone's doing good. I uh, had a pretty decent weekend. The weather was nice this weekend. Well, it's Sunday. Today it's pretty gray and overcast. I heard that we might get some more rain next week. Surprise, surprise. But this Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is pretty hot and uh, pretty sunny. And uh, so, which is nice, you know, feels like summer. It's been a uh, crazy summer weather-wise because of the... We either get torrential uh, rain and downpour or just rain in general and it's cool or we get like super hot weather that's really humid. We don't have any like in between weather but that's just how the nature nature of the beast is I guess so yeah. So and it's funny I had a cup I had some gigs this week that were all outside and and so, you know, that's just how, that's how things mostly are here uh, as far as, um, you know, our gigs that we have here in Maine. And generally, like, what it's like to be, uh, you know, uh, a musician here in Maine. Most, you know, about 85% of the shows that, you know, I might go to just as a, a fan, but also probably 90% of the shows that I get to play in are all uh, outside. So it's, uh, you know, it's a funny thing. Um, today's going to be a little bit of a different show. I had some things on my mind and I wanted to talk about. It's going to be a little bit about music, the state of life here in Maine, and, you know, just some things that I've been thinking about and kind of involved in. So recently, there was a really great venue that opened in January of this year. It was called the Gypsy Rose Tavern. <clears throat> really, really awesome spot. <clears throat> and, you know, I was really fortunate to play a lot of gigs there this, this winter. This winter was actually... Uh, probably the busiest winter I ever had since I've been in Maine. Typically in Maine for musicians and stuff, it's, you know, uh, totally seasonal. And usually wintertime, it's very slow. Summertime is when there's a lot of activity, you know, from being a, you know, if you're a fan of just going to see music and then, and then playing gigs, that, that's where usually the money is and that's usually where all the work is. But this winter was really cool because there were two venues that opened back to back. Um, and, and I believe there was like a third place that had opened. But, but just between those two places that opened, there was the Gypsy Rose Tavern, of course. They opened the first week of January. And then also uh, the Snow Bowl, which is a big snow kind of resort skiing area here in Maine in Camden, Maine. And they started having all kinds of music during the winter there, which was really great. So between both of those places, there was like tons of gigs all of a sudden. And in, in literally in the middle of winter. And it was crazy. You know, on one hand, you know, really great, really awesome, but super surprising. And at one point it was it was super busy, you know, like where there were multiple gigs going on at once. And then, um, you know, again, just if you're being a fan of going to see music or, or whatnot, there was, you know, a plethora of choices all of a sudden during the winter time. So very, very cool. Um, and. They just recently closed. The Gypsy Rose Tavern just recently closed, unfortunately. And it was a big shock. Uh, but then also, in all honesty, it wasn't like a big, uh, a huge surprise either. 
because of a bunch of different things that happened. So, you know, today I was going to talk about those things, you know, around the Gypsy Rose Tavern and also kind of what happens when a new place opens and it's got some traction behind it or potential, you know, it's got a lot of potential behind it. And just like longevity, trying to keep things afloat in these crazy times that we live in. So, yeah, that's kind of what I was going to talk about today. Again, <clears throat> all these, you know, these these opinions are just, you know, my opinions. So, I never, I never really, uh, you know, um, ever believe that people need to share my my opinions or you know and <clears throat> you know i'm like anyone else i'm pretty you know pretty opinionated like you know uh you know or you know you have your courage or your convictions or you know those kinds of things but you know so gypsy rose tavern closed and it was really unfortunate and it was for me it was a shock but then it was also uh, not a big surprise, you know. So, but again, the the um, the immediate <clears throat> kind of fallout of that situation, you know, uh, given the business itself and all the people that it employed, not only you know the hundreds of musicians that it, that place was providing a, a space for for paying gigs. But then, you know, the staff and all those people. So, you know, <clears throat> I was really heavily involved with that place. I really wanted to do what I could and support that place, you know, in in my own... I, th I feel like, you know, for what, for what it's worth, in my own way, I was pretty proactive with, like, really promoting lots of events there. Uh, going to lots of shows there, I, you know, when I had the time, I, I've gone, I went there to see music there all the time, uh, went to their open mic, you know, told people about the place, the food was, was really good, um, you know, the whole atmosphere, it was, a, it was kind of a unique vibe to it, it had a really cool uh, tavern vibe to it, so, and it was an interesting experience because I was, you know, kind of a part of the whole business from its, you know, its birth. So it was interesting seeing it, you know, kind of grow into where at one point it kind of exploded as far as publicity and there was this real genuine buzz around, around the whole place. There was, you know, all of these things happening. But, I, you know, and again, when I first started going there and my first started experiencing playing gigs there and going to gigs there and then going to the open mic, I was just blown away by all of the support that, of all the, all of the folks that were coming out to this place. And, you know, there's always been this outcry and I'm, I've been part of that too, of people saying, well, there's no, you know, there's no real venues in Camden and there hasn't been, there hasn't been any, venues in Camden for many many years years and years ago there were multiple venues in Camden but things have changed so much you know a lot of it is due to you know gentrification you know uh, a lot of rich people buying up all of this property and and then all, them opening them up opening up you know uh, apartments condominiums and trying to like cater towards more of the tourists and <clears throat> musicians always have this like negative stigma around them so you know they're like to a degree by by a lot of communities and areas they're kind of looked at as as not essential and almost bottom feeders and i've gotten that kind of vibe from people uh, in the town of camden in general they want it to be pretty and appealing for the tourists the out-of-towners uh, but like you know uh, a real life postcard kind of a scenario but as far as there being any real depth to it or uh, an area for culture and and cultivating art and talent it's been 
that's been detracted from that town over the years more and more. Other towns still have that, and I think it's changed a lot. But I think there are, you know, even Belfast, Rockland, other areas, they all are kind of interested in trying to bring and cultivate that kind of thing in, in its various forms. But Camden has been this thing of where it's kind of been drawing it out. But so when, you know, the Gypsy Roast closed, you know, it was, it was very sad. But I, I, after a few months of going there and performing there, I felt like something was wrong. I don't know what it was. I had this bad feeling. Um, I don't know. I, it, it's very strange. I felt, it felt like something was off. It felt. I, after after going there and, and and also being a part of the music scene there for 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 a long time or for in it, not a long time but for for a very intense period of time I went from like a feeling of like wow like this is great and this is positive and feeling uh comfortable getting more comfortable going there and just feeling almost a sense of going to ho going home kind of a thing I started feeling distant from it. And I started feeling like there was this weird um, black cloud approaching. And I didn't know what it was. And it kept getting more intense o over a period of time. And right around that time, I noticed that, you know, there was a period where the food just wasn't as good. There was all kinds of problems with the staff. There the promotion that they were doing for their shows seemed to really fall by the wayside. Initially, they were really great about those kinds of things. Um, and going to shows, I started noticing, and also playing at shows, more less and less people were coming out to these to these places to to these events. And it was a weird thing. And I'm like, what's going on here? You know. And I always felt, because it is part part of this big hotel, the Cedar Crest, which has been in Camden for years and years and years, 20 years maybe, probably more. And you have this new music venue, tavern place, opening up as part of it, you know, where it's going to have, you know, essentially loud rock bands. My big concerns right away were were like, well, this place opened when this hotel was closed. What's it going to be like when the hotel opens? And knowing that the hotel is like literally an inch away from this this venue that was bringing tons of people and loud bands, dance bands, and a variety of great great things and a drinking crowd I'm like what is that going to be like and then also the parking the parking issues or the par parking situation was an, an issue right away where there were many times you I would go there and parking would be um, almost impossible you'd have to like scramble around to find parking and sometimes park in the f far, 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 far back, and and I kept thinking like, wow, what is this? What's this going to be like when the hotel opens? You know how how is that going to work? Because that's going to bring in hundreds of people, and then you're going to have the people who are going to the tavern. That's going to be impossible unless they figure something out. So those two things right away, I was just like really concerned about. And I just didn't understand how they could remedy that. So there was a bunch of factors around it. And, and you know, and towards the, the end of the whole situation, when things kind of got pr problematic, when the hotel opened, and then when there was noise complaints, and realizing there was no buffer between the venue and the hotel, that suddenly, you know, these people were making complaints because the bands are literally set up right where the office is and there was no buffer. There was no, so they can't, you know, 
making phone calls, people calling her for reservations, checking in. You know, it was virtually impossible because the sound was so loud. And when I heard about those complaints initially, I got pissed off at the Cedar Crest because I'm like, well, what is this bullshit? You know, can't this is just another example of Camden cracking down on music and art and not wanting to, you know, cultivate it. But then after I cooled my jets, I was like trying to think about it a little more rationally. I was just like, you know what? Their their complaints are, are legitimate. They've been here for years. And then, you know, why doesn't why don't both places work together and they can build uh, some kind of sound barrier or set up the bands in a different area, set up some other thing, get creative to kind of keep this thing going. And right around that time, you know, the the place was doing really well. So, well, you know, and I but I noticed that there was this big drop off and I kept hearing all of this talk that this place was making so much money and kind of boasting about how much money and profit that they were making each week and weekend. And right around that time, I heard from the from the owners of that place that, well, they don't have they're financially hurting and that they can't. You know, it's going to be a strain for them to get this thing set up. And it didn't make any sense to me. Why all of a sudden, suddenly they were more or less crying pro poverty after publicly saying how much money they're making. It was strange. And right around that time, I noticed that there were all kinds of people coming and going there and all these things. And then, and then you know, a few weeks later after that, it was announced that, I, or I was told that the place was closed. <clears throat> and it was then it went public, and everybody, you know, I, and, and I knew it would be this kind of outcry, and there would be all this thing, because, you know, all the people who lost money, you know, myself included, I know other musicians that have lost, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars from playing gigs there. Um, and, you know, the employees that work there, all of those things, everybody lost you know, lost their shirts. And there was no, it happened so quick. So there was no heads up about anything. <clears throat> you know, in the height, <clears throat> in the height of the summer. <clears throat> and, you know, it was initially, and then it was announced on social media and whatnot uh, that Gypsy Rose was closed. And, effective immediately so there was no like you know preparation for it or you know some kind of last day that they'll be open and people come in and just you know kind of pay their respects to the whole thing because it was a really there was a period of time there where it was pretty magical there was a lot of great energy going on and people were you know really uh you know kind of doing something special together you know so, you know, and again, it's a mixed thing. I think there's kind of a, a, a weird fake facade around it also because one good friend of mine pointed out, well, most of the people that go there are all musicians. So he was saying, well, when the season changes and all of those musicians that go to the venue to support other friends or other bands they're going to be busy or busier so they're not going to really be going there and he felt that you're going to see a big shift because he felt that's what was the audience and i agreed with him and i didn't disagree with him but it was definitely a factor um but i do think that there's enough of a of a of a um local crew of people and a population that is eager to, you know, to, to support music. I think there's a lot of other factors that keep people away. I think there's, you know, all the streaming services that people can order food online. A lot of people don't stay out past nine o'clock. A lot of people are, you know, they love to be home. They love to People are very busy, but, you know, people are tired or I don't know what it is, but people are busy, I guess, and they don't want to, 
go out like they used to say 15 or 20 years ago and i think a lot of it is attributed to the whole kind of streaming insular life people have like where they can order their meals online and they can be entertained uh you know in their comfort of their own home and uh they just do what they do they don't want to spend any extra money that's a big factor you know so i think that's the biggest thing in my opinion that we're as musicians and people who go to events and people who put together events that is the biggest obstacle i think than more than anything else especially in maine but in general so when it was announced you know publicly that they were closed i knew the narrative was going to be basically there was going to be a line drawn in the sand and people were going to obviously be pissed off and, and hurt and shocked but i thought i kind of predicted that there the narrative was going to be that they were going to uh, attack the hotel cedar crest and that's exactly what happened and people started to really really attack the cedar crest and people were tagging the cedar crest in their posts being very very uh mean and spiteful and angry saying that they were you know gonna you know boycott the place and that you know this is just another example of camden crushing culture and all these things and it's like i believe and again it's not black and white i, I feel like most of these folks made it out to be a black and white issue and i do believe that camden and i think in general things have changed so much in our scene and we've had to just try to adapt to some degree in the music scene in the art scene and uh you know with things being gentrified i think that is the biggest change you know with the increase of kind of to a degree of class warfare where you have the top you know 10 percent or five percent of people making a certain amount of money they're able to move here to maine and buy these you know outlandishly priced buildings and houses and you know meanwhile the people who are in the middle or the working poor are you know getting less of that there's less opportunity uh, or there's less um of an area to grow and you have to be even more creative on how you do how you do those things maybe having to work that second or third job you know um holding on to your savings even more you know it's 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 a tough thing and that's been happening nationally for for a long time and with the pandemic it's ushered in that whole kind of thing even more so but you know and i do believe that that's a thing that's happened you know as far as people stamping out culture in a lot of ways i mean look how music programs have been infected in schools you know that seems like it's coming back and it's bouncing back or just the arts in general but it's a struggle and so i understand that and i totally agree with that but with this very particular situation i don't think it's really the case i don't really think it is and one of the things that i found the most irritating was i knew a couple of people personally you know i where well, i know them very very well they actually started these things on facebook and again this is the downfall this is why people suck most of the time this is why you know i love people and then i hate people you know and i'm sure people say the same thing about me but this is the reason i don't like and i think facebook and social media is so disgusting is that everybody uses it as a as a, a diary a personal diary and just want to vomit their own opinionated bullshit and the minute somebody criticizes it or is not really agreeing with them that becomes that opens up the floodgates to even more shit and it's a cesspool and i feel like well this kind of reveals people you know people's true natures and it's not pretty i think people are really great and fantastic and wonderful on one hand but if you give them uh if you give them a platform it gets really ugly and it's it, there's no such thing as reining things back or being respectful or being you know open to other people's opinions 
I think 90% of the time that doesn't happen. And so, you know, I knew a couple of people personally that basically started this thing of where they were, they actually called it hashtag boycott the cedar crest. And it, you know, opened up the, the floodgates and suddenly everything was everyone and their grandmother and their grandmothers was attacking the cedar crest saying, Gypsy Rose good, Cedar Crest evil. We must fight the man and we must unify and and reestablish this place somewhere else and fuck Camden and you know fuck the man and and uh, you know and in a lot of ways I am totally in step with that idea but I feel like this situation was more complicated than that and wasn't really an example of that and it was unfair to do that and just really bad and terrible and juvenile and kind of gross. And I noticed some people who were doing that re-edited their posts and did not include the Cedar Crest because I feel like they got backlash because of how they came across as just really terrible people. And one of the other things that I noticed, and I feel from what I've seen of throughout these posts, is most of the people that I have seen post either comments or actually post these little headlines are people that never went to the Cedar Crest. Um, people I never saw ever come to any gigs that I played at or any shows that I went to. And I played a lot of gigs there. And I just played a couple of gigs there just fairly recently. But I played a ton of gigs there. It was really wonderful, uh, really fun. And I also went to see tons of bands there. I saw tons of bands there. And uh, ate their food all the time, the whole thing. I was there all the time, almost to a point where I was like, I need a break because I was there all the time. And I have to say, most of the people that are that jumped on this whole bandwagon of outwardly attacking the Cedar Crest all of these folks I never saw there, ever, ever. And they, nev they never stepped foot. Guarantee they never even stepped foot in this place. I never saw them, and I was there just as, as much as anyone else, if not more. I never saw them there. And I'm just like, this is the hypocrisy around it. You know, people need a, a, a thing to vent and to air their bullshit because of their personal issues. And, you know, it got to the point of where this is this, this is how people are. And it got to the point of where I, some of these folks I'm actually friends with. And I am like, you know what? I don't even want to be friends with these people in real life. You know, that's how it is. And it's a funny thing. You know, it's a funny, funny thing. There's this balance of that you know and the other things too is when a venue opens I talked to a band that played at the Gypsy it was actually the last band that I saw and what he tries to do when he knows that the venue is opening he knows that everybody and their grandmother is going to try to get a gig there you know and and I when I find when I find out about about a venue I will do my damnedest to reach out to them and to try to get a gig. I'm part of that. I understand that. But, you know, what he said was like, well, he just looks at it as kind of herd mentality. It's a f feeding frenzy, and he doesn't like to do that. He's like, no, let people just chomp away, chomp away, chomp away. When the dust settles, then maybe I'll try getting a gig. That's how he approaches it. And there was a, re a recent development with, with a new place that just opened. And I did send out information, contact information, trying to get a gig there and looking into it. And while I was doing that, I talked to the owners. I realized that there were hundreds of other bands doing the same thing. And this, what this guy had told me started resonating in my head. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing because there's a balance of where after the Gypsy Rose Tavern, I'm trying to struggle to a degree to, to try to book some other shows to make up for losing all of the money that I lost. And I know other musicians are doing that. 
because it's part of my income. So out of necessity, I'm trying to do that. But then on the other hand, I realize that, wow, I am part of this like weird feeding frenzy. And on one hand, it's kind of sad and it's kind of pathetic. So I'm kind of like in the middle with that. And I understand that. And when this guy had told me that, who's a really great musician and I really respect, I was like, you know what? He totally makes sense. But again, it's a fine line. It's a weird balance. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting time. Interesting dilemma. You know, and, you know, places come and go. A lot of musicians, for the most part, keep on keeping on somehow. And a lot of musicians don't continue playing music. But it's an ever-changing landscape. And it's 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 a very complex landscape and it's always changing and it's this i you know this thing of where you you have to try to adapt to what's going on you know in that climate or you know how things are progressing so yeah so today's show is just me talking about situations of you know around these 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 two issues particularly around the gypsy rose tavern how they affect local communities, um, the complex things that that go into all of those situations, particularly around this situation, where it's not really black and white, and how it affects the community around the musicians uh, trying to stay employed or or what have you, and what musicians do to try to survive and finding that balance. So, and also people's you know people's true nature i think so anyway so this is jason dean so thanks again and we'll see you next time peace